The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship service. This is the service for the second Sunday after Christmas, which this year falls on December 3rd, 2021. Uh, as you can see, this service is a little different. I know last week I did a little different kind of service at church, and I promised that we'd be back to normal this Sunday, but uh, it turns out this past week my wife Linda was... Uh, she tested positive for COVID. So we're quarantining. Uh, neither one of us is, is very sick. Um, we have cold symptoms. Uh, Linda has a few more symptoms than I do, uh, but she's not terribly sick either. I, it seems like we probably got uh, a not too serious version of this virus, and we're, we're thankful uh, to God for that. But we are trying to be safe, and so we're quarantining for uh, a while. Uh, because of that, at Zion, there, there will be services on the 3rd and the 10th. Those Sundays, they'll be led by the elders. I won't be there for those. I'm not going in the church building at all for anything. Uh, the uh, committee meetings scheduled for the 4th are canceled. Confirmation classes for the 6th and the 13th are canceled. And the 3rd and the 10th at 9 o'clock. Um, Sunday morning we'll have our regular worship except it'll be led uh, by elders. I wanted to get those announcements in at the beginning here uh, for for those who don't stay all the way through the announcements at the end uh, just so you know and uh, you can uh, keep us in your prayers if you would uh, but I will put out a service for well this one for the third there will be one out there for the tenth uh, God willing if I don't get a lot sicker and uh and hopefully I will be back leading worship at Zion on the 17th. But we will continue to put uh, services on um, our YouTube channel uh, as we go. Uh, so uh, we begin, uh, this, this, this uh, service for today is, is not a set service out of the hymnal because we don't have an organ, we're not doing things like that. So it's going to be a variety of things that will come up on your screen. You can participate in that way. Uh, we are going to begin now with a hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who offer week after week their worship and praise at Zion Lutheran Church and other houses of worship around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Christmas is from 1 Kings, chapter 3, starting at verse 4. And the king went out to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to, to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I'm but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may be discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. 
And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 119, verses 97 to 104. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies. It is forever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Our epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. To the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Spirit. Amen. The text for our consideration is our epistle lesson from Ephesians chapter 1, where Paul writes this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. This is our text. It's the time of year where people make New Year's resolutions. Have you made any? New Year's resolutions are kind of an annual planning ritual where we lay out what we hope to accomplish or hope to be during the year to come. Of course, they can be a good thing because planning and setting goals are good things. They can also be a challenge because we don't know what's ahead. I'm thinking that a year ago, very few of us thought that life would be the way it is now. Sometimes planning can be a bad thing. As we go to great extremes to accomplish the plans we had ahead of us, we have ahead of us. Unfortunately, at this time of year, during January, we spend some time focused on the concept of unwanted babies as we approach the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision and the legalization of abortion in America. If a baby is unplanned, it is seen as a burden. Planned is better, so unplanned must go. How much of your life is planned? Do you plan out every day? Do you plan out your week? your month, your year, maybe more than that. Would you say in, your, in the whole that your life is planned or unplanned? God plans. He laid out the course of things from before creation to the very last day. He knows what has been and he knows what's coming. And he knows where you fit into it. So, of course, the birth of Jesus was planned, as Paul wrote to the Galatians, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. For whatever reason, God thought that when Jesus was born, it was the fullness of time. Many scholars think that this was because of the Roman Empire and the ease of travel and the unity of language that existed, making it easy for the early church to spread. Who knows what was in God's mind? We certainly know with respect to the birth of Jesus that God had laid everything out. He planned the shepherds, the angels, the star, and certainly the wise men, he even planned the census, and he knew exactly when it would take place and how. The birth of Jesus didn't come as a surprise to God or to the heavenly host singing to the shepherds that night. Even the lineage of Jesus was planned from Adam on. The Old Testament seems almost obsessed with lineage and generations. There are extensive genealogies in Genesis 5 and 10 and 11. Most of the book of Numbers is genealogical. First and second kings contain a complete line of the kings. But it really gets serious in the, the Gospel of Matthew. In chapter 1, 42 generations from Abraham to Jesus are recounted for us. And Luke 3 has a genealogy all the way back to Adam. It would seem that God wants us to know that Jesus' birth was no accident. It was planned from the Garden of Eden on, and perhaps even before that. God knew when the Savior would come. His ministry was planned as well. 
all of his travels from Galilee to Judea, from Nazareth to Jerusalem, were laid out for Jesus. He knew where he was going. Even before his birth, his parents traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem so that he would be born in his ancestral home. Prophets had said hundreds of years earlier that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea, even though he was a Nazarene. And because of the census, he was. Prophets spoke of the things that Jesus would do, the miracles, the teachings, the travels. The plan was in place, and Jesus knew what he would do. It was all laid out before him. Even his death was planned. Months before it occurred, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to Jerusalem to suffer and die. He spoke to Judas about his betrayal. He didn't seem at all surprised when the temple guard showed up in the garden to arrest him. As he hung on the cross, he fulfilled much of the Old Testament prophecy about him, even by what he said, and by something so simple as asking for a drink. His resurrection was planned as well. Prophecy had said that he would reign on the throne of his father David forever. Jonah th spent three days in the belly of the fish, as Jesus spent three days in the tomb. And Jesus told the scholars that was a sign of who he was. Jesus would win the victory over death, because he always intended to. He had told Adam and Eve in the garden that when they sinned, they would die. But the Savior would come. Jesus was that well-planned Savior. Then came his ascension. He returned to his rightful place, where he had been from the beginning of time and where he would remain until the last day. That, too, was all in the plan from the very beginning. And, of course, the church was planned. Jesus spent three years teaching and preparing his 12 closest followers to be the leaders of that early church. He had sent 72 of his followers out as missionaries on kind of a trial run. He taught his disciples what he came to do. Then he told them to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching. Finally, on the day of Pentecost, he sent his Holy Spirit so that they could carry out the plan and build his church from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Your salvation was planned as well. As our text says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. God knew you, and planning your salvation, and he was planning your salvation before the foundation of the world. He foreknew your faith, received through baptism, nurtured by word and sacrament. He did all that you would need to remain faithful to him to the end. Because you were sealed with the Holy Spirit until that day, you will receive the promised inheritance, a glorious eternity in heaven. As Jeremiah wrote about 600 years before the birth of Christ, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So seek him and find him. You are in God's thoughts and in his heart, and he has destined you to live with him forever.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son, the Eternal Word, became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature, submissive to his earthly parents, and always about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us in Christ, your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Preserve your church by the preaching of the gospel of salvation and the seal of the promised Holy Spirit in baptism. Raise up among his faithful preachers to the praise of Christ's glory until we acquire the inheritance promised us in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gave to your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule your people Israel, chiefly the wisdom that begins in fearing you. Give to the leaders and elected officials of our nation wisdom for their task to discern between good and evil and to govern this people in peace and quietness. Be gracious to preserve our president and president-elect, our governor, and all legislators and judges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need, and heal them according to your will. Receive our thanksgiving for every blessing and kindness you have shown to your people. Give comfort and hope. To all who mourn, we bring our special concerns before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Amen.
joining us. Once again, I'll remind you that we are having services at Zion. On the 3rd and the 10th, they will be led by the elders as I quarantine here at home uh, because of uh, Linda's positive COVID test. Um, other things at church are, are largely canceled. Uh, you might want to call somebody for before coming in for anything. We're trying to keep the building uh, empty and, and be as safe as we can be. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, the church number uh, will come up on your screen in a moment. Uh, my home number is 320-629-2242. You can uh, call me if you have concerns uh, as I work here from home. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here in our, our extra bedroom, if you will. Uh, having raised six kids in this house, we have a lot of extra bedrooms right now. Uh, but uh, this one here, we kind of fixed up a little nicer to have uh, guests in, and you can see the grandkids are up over here. And uh, this is a, a plaque here. It's got the wedding vows on it. I'm sorry it's backward. I don't know how to fix that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, may God bless your week.